You know, this Broadway Hotel uh, Phase Two project that we're talking about right now is going to require about a $20 million investment uh, in the downtown area to make that project happen. And we know that if unless that TIF is put into that project, in this case about $2 million worth of, uh, of uh, property tax, real estate tax over that 23 year time period, his rate of return is not going to be sufficient enough for him to get a reasonable rate of return. It's only with the influx of TIF that, that project would be built. We set up a, a matrix, right? And uh, across the top is your money or other people's money. And on the side is a gift for you or a gift for others. Now, if you're spending your money on you, you want something that is high quality and uh, a low price, right? Because it's your money. So imagine you're buying a car. Now, if you're spending your money on someone else, right, you're buying a car for somebody else, you might say, look, I want a low price and I don't care about the quality. I'll just put a... If you're spending other people's money on you, right, you're getting a gift for yourself, you might say, well, I want high quality and I don't care about the price because it's not my money. And lastly, if you're spending other people's money on other people, you don't care about the quality or the price. And right there is TIF. City councils are spending, spending other people's tax dollars on other people's projects. And that is the dangerous part of the quadrant, the dangerous quadrant we want to stay out of in public policy. But all too often, that's where public policy ends up. Legislators spend other people's money to benefit other people. When a city employs TIF, it allows the developer to keep the increase in property tax, 100% of the increase in property tax, while only keeping maybe 50% of the sales tax or the income tax or the utility tax. What that means is the city is giving away half of its own money, but 100% of the school district money or the library's money, because those guys rely exclusively on the property tax. They might be required to maybe go out and get additional requests for a bond um, to, to make some additional improvements or to maybe do what they need to do because they're not getting that um, property tax. For some members of our Board of Education, they felt, you know, when you, when you gamble for 21 years at keeping that, our tax income the same, when potentially someone from the private sector could go in there and develop it, and the tax, you know, the assessed valuation would go up and that would increase the number of taxes to us. They felt like that that property certainly could develop at, at some level, uh, certainly not with a $20 million investment, but something could possibly happen. But again, the, it, it, nothing is definitive. Uh, we, you know, we have no crystal ball to be able to look into the future to determine what might or might not happen in a 23-year time period. <laughs> 